Hag Sameach, everyone. Hag Sameach. Hag Shavuot Sameach. We're going to have a good Shavuot tonight, right? Yes. yes. Let's start with a word of prayer as we get ready to hear the sound of the shofar. And we're so great to be, uh, 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 we're so great to, to experience God's presence here tonight and allow his uh, heart beat from Sinai. Uh, to ring loud in our hearts, and as we hear the sound of the shofar, let us let it spiritually awaken us to the call to Mount Sinai. We're going up the mountain tonight. How many ready to go up the mountain? Amen. How many ready to go higher? Amen. Maybe some uh, way your thinking is going to go higher tonight. So let's start with this call of hearing the sound of the shofar. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, our Vino Malkino, our Father and our King, for blessing us with this wonderful feast of weeks. We thank you, Lord God, as we've been counting the Omer, Father. We've, it has led us into this place at this time, at this very season. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we can allow hearts, Lord God, to come together as one, as Israel did at Mount Sinai. Father, we pray as we hear the sound of the shofar, you awaken us spiritually to the voice that they heard in those days. May we hear it in these days. And Father, let, us, let it prepare us for the coming of the Messiah. In Yeshua's name we pray. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kishanu b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu lishmoa kol shofar al shofar. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and has commanded us to hear the sound of the shofar. Amen. sound of this heavenly shofar as it increased and that was beautiful guys let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise and thank our shofar Lord at this time we are going to have uh, Barbara Klein, Klein to come and, and light the candles for Shavuos for Shavuot as we move into the festival and this is uh, called in Hebrew Yom Tov which says this is a good day how many know today Amen. is a good day Amen. this Amen. is the day the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it so let's say the blessing um, together, or actually why don't we light and we'll say the blessing together to enter into this Shabbat time of Shavuot. And you know the tradition in my house is when the candles go out, that means everyone's got to go to bed. So <laughs> may the Lord keep the candles lit in the midst of the air conditioning, amen? Amen. Helps if you turn it up first. This one the other one. Yeah. Just take this one as well. Yeah. Just leave it here. All right. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctified us with his commandments and has commanded us to kindle the festival of lights. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Barbara. Boy, that was a low key or high key, depending on which <laughs> perspective you take. At this time, we're going to have uh, Pressy come and read uh, the Shavuot Psalm. Psalm 67 has seven verses, like the seven weeks we count. Yeah. And it has 59 words, like the 50 days of Shavuot. Okay? So we're going to read Psalms or Tehillim 67, 1 through 7. You can start with the header. For 
are the leader with string instruments, a sound, a song. God, be gracious to us and bless us. May he make his face shine towards us so that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples give thanks to you, God. Let the peoples give thanks to you, all of them. They pass through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. This is, this is Jewish. Oh, okay. So we'll pick so, up with verse number four there. Let the nations be glad and shout for joy, for you will judge the peoples fairly and guide the nations on earth. Let the peoples give thanks to you. God, let peoples give thanks to you, all of them. The earth has yielded its harvest. May God, our God, bless us. May God continue to bless us so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, this Psalm 67 with seven verses and uh, the 50 words in Hebrew, if you're looking at the Hebrew tongue, um, speaks of Shavuot, which is for the nations. As it even tells us that God will bless us when he shines his face upon us. That Doesn't that sound like last week on Sh uh, uh, Shabbat? We actually studied Parshat Naso that gave us the priestly blessing found in Numbers <coughs> chapter 6. After the Nazarite description, it gives us the last few words from 24 through all the way to 27 about placing the name of God, El Shaddai, on the people through this blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you, shine his face upon you, be gracious to you, lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. So the essence of this Psalm 67 actually extends this blessing to all the nations, as it says, so that your way may be known on earth, your Yeshua, your salvation, among all nations. If you were reading in the Hebrew, you would see that God's Yeshua should be known to all the nations, that all peoples, and it stresses a couple times that all peoples will give thanks to the Lord. Let all nations be glad. How many know when all the nations go to Jerusalem and study Torah together and learn war no more, we will all rejoice in the millennial reign of the Messiah. Amen? Amen. The messianic days to come. We're looking for these days to be fulfilled. And uh, we know that it speaks of Shavuot because it tells us in verse number six, the earth has yielded its harvest. And this is harvest season. This yeah. is the season of the a Feast of Weeks where we've counted our barley for seven weeks. Now it's time for the wheat harvest. Amen? Amen. And uh, it even speaks about the book of Ruth to us because the book of Ruth is read throughout um, uh, a season or uh, of, of, the, of the counting because it's based upon the barley harvest and the wheat harvest. And so we're thankful today that we can celebrate and come to the mountain of the Lord today. I, I want to just go ahead and read um, uh, a small section from Vaikra or, or uh, Psalm, uh, excuse me, Leviticus 23. And um, we're kind of a little bit casual tonight, so um, the blessing... We will say before reading the 10 words, but I just want to read directly from the scripture tonight, uh, Leviticus 23. And uh, how many know it gives us not only Shabbat, but seven feasts of the Lord. Yes. And I want you to know that those of you that honored this tonight, God is shining his face upon you. Amen. And for our congregation, we want to raise the bar for Shavuot because it's equal to Pesach. It is equal to Sukkot, and it should be more highly celebrated than even Hanukkah because that is a biblical feast of the Lord that he commands us to keep. If we were in Jerusalem, we would be here in, the, in the streets of Jerusalem, at the temple, um, at the hotel. We would be celebrating together, and we would celebrate with a high level of festivity. It should not be marked down. Traditionally in America, though, Shavuos, Shavuot is not treated um, as highly as Hanukkah. I think as Messianic believers, we should raise the bar. Amen. Because for the greater Christian world, guess what? They know Pentecost is a big thing. Amen. But even Pentecost Sunday in the solar calendar, which is this Sunday in the Christian world, is not even as highly uh, understood or appreciated or celebrated even among Christendom. Amen. So as Messianic believers, we should raise the bar and not only experience Sinai, but experience Mount Zion. The city of Jerusalem, where the fire fell upon the heads of those that heard God speak not from the heavens, but through the mouth of 120 that allowed languages of scripture to, to speak to them in the wonderful works of God. And we know that at Shavuot, God spoke 
directly from heaven, and it was divided into 70 tongues or flames of fire. Amen. The first one to ever speak in tongues or languages was God himself. Amen. When he gave us his word, his ten words, Aseret HaDibrot, as many of the rabbis call it, or Aseret HaDvarim, these words from Sinai are his covenant to us. So uh, Vaikar, Leviticus 23, um, speaks of Shabbat in verse 3. Uh, verse 4 gives us the beginning of all the feast days, starting with Pesach, or unleavened bread, and even giving us the day of first fruits, counting the barley harvest, the day that Yeshua rose from the dead. And it leads us through, I'm going to start with verse 9. Adonai said to Moshe, tell the people of Israel, after you enter the land, I am giving you, and harvest, like we read in Psalm 67, harvest, um, uh, it's ripe crops, and you are to bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest, talking about the counting of the Elmer, to the Kohen, the priest. He is to wave the sheaf before Adonai so that he will be accepted. The Kohen is to wave it on the day after the Shabbat, speaking of the Shabbat of unleavened bread. On the day that you wave the sheaf, you are to offer a male lamb without defect in the first year as a burnt offering for the Lord. Its grain offering is to be one gallon of fine flour mixed with oil and an offering made by fire to Adonai as a fragrant aroma. Its drink offering is to be of wine, one quart. You are not to eat uh, bread, dried grain, or fresh grain until the day you bring the offering for your God. This is a permanent regulation through all your generations, no matter where you live. From the day after the day of rest, that is, from the day you bring the sheaf for waving, you are to count seven full weeks. This is where we get the word uh, Shavua for week, like when we say Shavua Tov, or Shavuot, which is plural, which means weeks. So you're counting seven Shavuot, or weeks, until the day after the seventh week, you are to count 50 days. So you can count it by weeks, but you also recognize 50 days. 50 days gives us, the, in the Septuagint, Pentaconta, which in modern uh, Greek would be Pentecosta, and that's where we get Pentecost from, um, known in the Christian world. And then you are to present a new grain offering. In other words, no longer are you going to present <coughs> barley, you're going to present the new grain. What is the new grain? It is wheat. You must bring bread from your homes for waving. Two loaves made with one gallon of fine flour, baked with leaven, as first fruits for Adonai. So you brought your first fruits of barley, now you will bring your first fruits of the wheat. Along with the bread, present seven lambs without defect, one year later, or yeah, one year old, excuse me, one young bull and two rams. These will be a burnt offering for Adonai with their grain and their drink offerings. An offering made by fire as a fragrant aroma for Adonai. Offer one male goat as a sin offering and two male lambs, one year old as a sacrifice of peace, uh, of peace offerings. The Kohen or the, or the priest will wave them with the bread of the first fruits as a wave offering before Adonai. We have two lambs. Uh, these will be holy for Adonai, for the Kohen. On the same day, you are to call a holy convocation. Do not do any kind of ordinary work. This is a permanent regulation throughout all your generations, no matter where you live. When you harvest your ripe crops produced in the land, don't harvest all the way to the corners of your field. Don't gather the ears of grain left by the harvesters. Leave them for the poor and the foreigner. I am Adonai, your God. This is the other reason why the book of Ruth is read during this time. Because that's exactly what Boaz did. Boaz left extra in his field, but he also said, throw a little more out there. And she was able to glean, um, Ruth was, for her and her mother-in-law, Naomi, who said, your God will be my God, your people will be uh, my people. And uh, I like one version that says that she was determined to go with Naomi and be one with her people. So as we're all one with Israel today, how many are praying for the peace of Jerusalem? Amen. Shalom, shalom, Yerushalayim. We need to pray for Israel. And so at this time, as we do what is being done throughout all of Israel from Tuesday night, um, which is the first uh, starting of Shavuot, we are actually just entered the second uh, night of it. And it's a two-day festival. And so uh, one-day festivals become two outside the land, and seven-day festivals become eight outside the land. 
So we're going to, at, at this time, have a call to worship to the reading table. So I'm going to say the traditional blessing. And uh, the Torah is already out, so we're going to say the blessing. When I say the blessing, um, after we say it, we're going to ask you to come up and be a part of the reading of the Ten Words. Okay? Baruch <laughs> Baruch Adonai HaMivrach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bacharbanu Mikol HaAmin Benatan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Bless the Lord, the Blessed One Bless is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the Universe Who chose us from all people and gave us the Torah Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Right, so at this time, we're going to ask for all of you to come to the reading table as one. We are Echad today. Ah. <laughs> Here we are. Okay, so this is the portion of the Torah. This lands basically between um, around Exodus chapter 20. And so, most of you know we're using the Yad for the pointer. This is kosher animal skin. The scribe writes uh, this special ink on, the, on this parchment. So it's the word made flesh, if you will, just like Yeshua the Messiah. And each one of you should have one of these copies of Aserah Tadibrot. If you, uh, mm -hmm. one of uh, our gentlemen could go into the for you there and just grab the extras and uh, just have your hand raised if you didn't get one. So we're going to, I'm giving this to you so you can have this. This is basically the English and the Hebrewish from a resource online. This is um, from mahon-mamre.com. Uh, 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 and they basically, uh, actually, no, excuse me. This is actually from bible.ort.org. It's a bar mitzvah training software. I've talked about it in our bar mitzvah training. So it's a great resource. So I just basically copy and paste it for all of you. Oh, nice. Thank you. So Shemot, or Exodus chapter 20, falls in Parshat Yitro. So this is the uh, instruction in chapter 18 of giving uh, Moses clear direction to have elders for his leadership. How interesting that after he picks the elders then all the elders that have been picked now get to see this wonderful display at Sinai with all of Israel, okay? Mm -hmm. Klal uh, Yisrael, the entire uh, nation of Israel is together. Now, traditionally white is worn because they wash their clothes and, 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 and wore white uh, is the, the tradition um, at Sinai showing that they were purified and had been washed. And the priests would also wear this white linen and that's why you see myself, I'm wearing what is called a kittle. And so that's traditional to wear for the feast days, like Passover, for uh, Shavuot, and for um, Sukkot. So we're going to take a look at um, this uh, translation in Hebrewish. That means it's English letters, but Hebrew words. So uh, that's going to be kind of a guideline for us. Now, the wording is a little different because it's the, a Jewish website with a little bit different wording than maybe some of your traditional English. But what we'll do is, just for sake of unity, we're all going to read it together, just like God would have spoken from Sinai and they would have uh, spoken together. Instead, God's going to speak through our tongues, like he did at Shavu, uh, uh, Shavuot in Acts chapter 2. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with Exodus chapter 20, verse 2, and it starts with... Anochi. So here we have Varaber Elohim El Kol Hadvarim. It says Haele Lemor. So it's saying that God uh, spoke um, all these words, um, <coughs> saying, and these are the words that were spoken. So um, here we have. If you want to read along with me, you can read along in the red, or actually, you don't have a red, but I have red. You can read along in the, in the bold underneath the verse. It says, let's say it together. Anochi Adonai Elohecha Asher Hotzitecha Me'eretz Mitzrayim Mi'beit Avadim Lo Yehiye Lach Elohim acharim al penai. 
So let's, let's break down this first part. Here we have anochi, which is a formal way of saying I, like mm -hmm. ani is, is not as formal, and anochi is very formal. So someone of great authority would many times say anochi. Um, it's almost like the Old English thou, you know, as a form of, a, a formal way to say you. So anochi is very formal. formal. So God says, anochi Adonai Elohecha. I am the Lord your God. He says, Asher, I'm the one that brought you, Me'eretz Mitzrayim, from the land of Egypt, Me'bet Avadim, from the house of bondage or slavery, because Evid is a slave, so Avadim actually is a slavery, if you will, or, or being slaves, the house of slaves, literally. Um, and it says, Lo Yehie. So here we have this concept in this positive statement, I am the Lord your God that brought you out of Egypt. He says, then there's a kind of a connection here of a, 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 excuse me, a prohibition. Lo Yehie. You will not have for yourself, or, or it, there will not be for yourself Elohim Acharim. These are other gods, mm -hmm. or gods that come after. They are not first. They're things you've made secondarily because only God is first, right? right. So they come after in order of, of power and authority. They have no authority compared to me. That's why he starts with the positive, I am the Lord your God. Right. Okay. Now, most Christians don't count this as a commandment because they say, well, you didn't command us to do anything. Right. But in, in Jewish thought, it's a commandment to believe in the only God that brought you out of Egypt. Right. So here we have um, this first statement. Let's read it together as it says here. I am God your Lord who brought you out of Egypt from the place of slavery. Next, do not have any other gods before me. Okay? Now, um, it goes on to uh, say in the text, um, keep reading here, right here. It says, Lo ta'ase, you're not to make for yourself. Lo ta'ase uh, lecha fesel. Now, the word is pesel, but in this case, it's, it's without the dagesh. Fesel is an idol. Mm -hmm. So you're not to make for yourself an idol. Vechol, um, it says, tmuna. This is a word we learn in Hebrew class. This is a picture. But this is relating to any image or picture or likeness of something. Tmuna is the likeness of something. It's literally what we use for a picture on the wall. So you're not to have um, any kind of image. Um, it says, Asher um, Bashanim, that's in the heavens. It says, Mima'al, uh, which this says, you're not to have anything in the heavens above or upon high, if you will. Ve'asher uh, ba'aretz mitachat, so in the earth, underneath or below, tachat means underneath. Goes on to say, ve'asher, um, it says ba'maim, in the water mitachat, in the waters below, so at the fish or anything of that nature, like Dagon, who was a fish god <coughs> for the yeah. Philistines. Okay, so uh, you see that he's talking about all the different kind of gods that the Egypt worshipped and the nations around them worshipped. Um, let's actually read this in English, verse 5. Do not bow down to such gods or worship them. I am, your, uh, I am God, your Lord, a God who demands exclusive worship where my enemies are concerned. I keep in mind the sin of the fathers for their descendants to the third and fourth generation. Now I had us read that next verse first in English because I'm going to break it down. So here we have a very interesting word that's used for worshiping God also. Um, we have lo tishtachave. So this means literally to bow yourself down and prostrate or worship another god. So this word here that refers to worshiping another god, tishtachave, uh, can is used for God. It says you're not to bow down to them, lahem, for for them or to them. It says below, it says Oh, and that also says uh, uh, not only it says top 
ta of dim, ta of dem. So it says you are not to make yourselves a slave to them or serve them. In other words, it says why? It says ki anochi Adonai elohecha. Why? Because I am the Lord your God. You're not to bow down and serve them. You're not to worship them because I'm the Lord your God. I love this one. We have the word, uh, a statement for God, El Kana. El Kana means that God is jealous, mm. or God is zealous, or God is passionate. Right. That God is like a lover that wants <laughs> exclusive love of the one he's in covenant with. He doesn't want anyone else to have us. He's jealous for us. Right. He's jealous of someone else uh, misusing us or hurting us and they won't be able to love us like he can love us. So God says, I, I am El Kana. I am El God Kana who is jealous. Okay. So it speaks of a love relationship because remember this is a marriage covenant here. <laughs> and you know last week they had the whole pr procedure in the Torah portion for jealousy when a man <laughs> thinks his wife is committing an affair mm -hmm. well, Israel would worship other gods they were committing affairs on mm -hmm. God right. so uh, this statement here um, leads into poket avon avot al banim al shelishim ve'al rebi'im lesanai now here you have a very interesting uh, 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 root here, pakad. The root pakad, or as it's translated here, poked, it means to visit. It's a positive visit or it's a negative visit. It's generic. So when God visits the, the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation, God is concerned that the kids will end up doing what the fathers do. Mm -hmm. So instead of just visiting the sins of the father, he visits the ones that are coming upon the children. So imagine every time a father drinks in his home and abuses his wife or mistreats his, his children, the sin of the father is coming upon the child. God doesn't make the sin come on the child right. because God doesn't put sins on an innocent child. Right. What God does is he visits. It's like a policeman stonking the door saying, what's going on in there? This is the police, open up. Because they've heard something is going on. Do you remember when God came down to visit Sodom and Gomorrah because he heard about the violence that was going on? Yeah. yeah. God is coming to check up on things. Right. And every generation, when people break his covenant and mistreat children and are violent to their neighbor and not loving their neighbors yourself, God comes down to visit. Yep. God says, I'm coming to check up on things. <laughs> I'm going to check this generation, and then when it goes to the next one, I'm going to check the next generation because I'm visiting. Right. Because the visit says this, to those who love me, sorry, I'm probably making him bark with that knock on. Um, that if, if, you, if I visit and you love me, he says later in the text, then I will bless a thousand generations. But if you hate me, I mean you slam the door in my face, then I'll just come visit the next generation, and the next generation, and the next generation. But I'll go up to four generations, and if all four generations are taught to hate me, reject me, what happens is they become a forever bait mind. Now this is not revealed until you get to the book of Romans, but you see this is what's going on in generations. So in this first part, um, it mentions the third and fourth generation. But let's see the next verse here. The Ose Chesed, look at this. That means, and makes mercy. La Alafim, it says for thousands. He makes mercy, or literally, to make or does mercy. So Ose Chesed, La Alafim. Alafim comes from the letter L, Alaf. But Aleph is an ox. Aleph is the letter that looks like the ox head. Right. But Elafim is referring to the ox that produces a whole family of oxen. So just like you have to have the oxen yoked together, the head of the household yokes the family together. This is where the, Greek, the Germans got the word husband from, house band. A house band is someone who bands the house together. He's the husband. That's what a husband's supposed to do. He's supposed to band the house together. Yeah, like Abba means the the head of the house or the strength of the house because the Aleph and the Beit. So here you have Alephim. So if you're raising your children right, you have Alephim, loving God. So it says, Le Ohave, Ohava, excuse me. So we have like Ohav, Ohav Shalom, to love peace. We have Ohavai which uh, to love me and Ule Shum 
re mitzvotai. So it says that, let's read it together um, in verse 6. But those who love me and keep my commandments, I shall love for thousands of generations. Okay? So this is so beautiful that God says, I'll show love for thousands. So right. that's future tense then? I will show because it hasn't, yeah. Um, um, well, ohav, um, ohev is present tense. So ohav means I will love in the future. Yeah. <laughs> so really, in, we should be saying ohev shalom. I, I love peace now. <laughs> Not ohav shalom, I will love peace in the future. Yeah. But, but nonetheless, let's uh, move on. Let's look at verse number seven because this is definitely a commandment we know. Um, it's, let's sing in, say it in English first. Do, Do not, not take, take the name of God, your, your God, Lord God in vain. vain. So it's interesting. They, they say the name of God, your Lord, in vain. But in Hebrew, let's say it together. Lo tisa et shem Adonai Elohecha Lashav Ki lo yenake Adonai et asher isa so what he's saying is, you will not lift up the name of the Lord your God for vanity. Lashav. Because um, it says, Adonai will not allow that, his, that you, uh, someone lifts up his name in vanity. So don't, take my, don't lift up my name in vanity, vanity because I won't allow it. Right. So anyone that uses God's name in vain, God says, I'm not going to allow that. Mm -hmm. So he'll put a stop to it. He shuts it down. Mm -hmm. So even when Israel was taking God's name in vain, God says, I'll shut you down. Mm -hmm. Now, the moment you call upon my name in truth, I'll set you back up again. Mm -hmm. I set up kingdoms, and I bring them down. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. and what does it mean to take God's name in vain? You're taking away the power of his name. Mm -hmm. You're making it void. So to even mention the name or call upon it and to not know the power that's in it when you misrepresent it, even if it's a business transaction or dealing where you put God's name on it. Oh, yes. You know, you kind of swear that you're going to do this in, in, in the name of God, in the name of heaven, or and then there's no validity. Yeshua said, no, let your nay, yay be yay and your nay be nay, or your no be no and your yes be yes, because you don't want to take God's name in vain. To use God's name on something where you say, you know, in the name... God, I'm going to do this, and then you don't do it. You've just taken away the power that's in his name. Because mm -hmm. now you use his name, which is powerful, but you didn't do it. Right. So you've misrepresented God. You've made void the power that should be in his name. When we use his name, it should represent the power to complete and do what he asks. Because mm -hmm. when we do something in the name of another, they're empowering us to do it. Right. right. All right, let's do the next one. Um, let's read it in uh, English first, number eight. This is a good one. Remember, Remember the, the Sabbath, Sabbath to keep it holy. holy. Okay? So here we have uh, Zachor. Let's say that together. Zachor et Yom HaShabbat Lekadsho. So here in the text, this is a whole section all by itself right here. Zachor et Yom HaShabbat. Not Shabbat. HaShabbat. It's not a Sabbath. It is the Sabbath. Any pastor... Or any believer that tells you, oh, you can take any day as a Sabbath. That doesn't matter. You're making void the word of God when he yes. says, no, mm -hmm. you are to remember the Sabbath. Right. What is he remembering? Creation's Sabbath rest. Right. Because when you keep the Sabbath, you are remembering that he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, you're declaring him as creator. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. Right? And not so, forgetting. You're not forgetting. Um, it goes on to explain... How many days you're to work? Let's read it in English, verse 9. You, you can, can work, work during, during the six, six week days, days and, and do all your tasks. tasks. So in Hebrew, that's Sheshet, Yamim, Tavod, Beasita, Chol, Melachtecha. Melachtecha. Okay? So this is, uh, we have Sheshet, Yamim, which is six days. Tavod, you will do all your work. Notice Avod and Avodah, work and worship. Is all connected because for the priest, Avodah, worship in the tabernacle or the temple was divine service unto God. So you were working. Notice the word Avodah and Eved, same root. Notice the name Obed, Oved, 
Evid, a servant of God or a worshiper of God. Same root, okay? Right. Now, we see here the next one. Let's read in English here. But Saturday, the seventh day, is the Sabbath, Shabbat, to God your Lord. Do not do anything that constitutes work. This includes you, your son, your daughter, your slave, your maid, your animal, and the corners in your gates. Let's say it in Hebrew. Ve'yom hashi'i Shabbat l'Adonai Elohecha lo ta'ase chol melacha ata uvincha uvitecha abdecha al I'm excuse me va'amacha uvehemetecha ve'gercha asher bish arecha. Now notice Arecha, your neighbor, right? Ve'ahavta l'arecha k'mocha, right? You should love your neighbor as yourself. So notice that the Gentiles are in here. Yes. The Gentiles that are working for you, the foreigners that are even in your gates, even your animals. If you have animals that are work animals, don't work them on Shabbat. Right. Let them rest on Shabbat. Now the rabbis have said if you want to walk your dog, it's okay on Shabbat. That does not work. That's rest. Because you give that dog, you know, a little relief when he goes and walks around. The, you know. The. Yeah. So there are natural things that should keep life. So anything that supports life is seen as the greater or more spiritual essence of the Torah than actually refraining from something. It's not about what you can't do. It's more about what you get to do. Right. What all week long you've not been able to do on Shabbat. Spend time with your family. Enjoy a meal together. Conversate a, a, un, without any restraint about the Torah, the prophets, the writings, about the coming Messiah. Remember that Maimonides said in every conversation, in every meal that you have, you should just stop and break every few minutes and just talk about the coming of the Messiah. Amen. Amen. What if we as believers did that more often? Right. Wow. Right? He was a firm believer in the coming of the Messiah. Even if he didn't have the revelation that Yeshua was the Messiah yet, it's still a principle that we as believers should do. Now, uh, let's read the next one in English, number 11. It was during the six days that, oh, excuse me, six weekdays that God made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on Saturday. God therefore blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Let's say it in Hebrew. Ki sheshet yamim asa Adonai et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz et hayam ve'et kol asher bam bayanach bayom hashvi'i Alkain Barach Adonai et Yom HaShabbat Be'yakeshehu. Okay? Now, yeah, it's a long passage, but notice it's all right here. This whole paragraph, notice there's no break. All of this, now this is usually said on a Friday night. This is the whole statement that's usually said on a Friday night to bring in the Sabbath, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the easy part is the next commands, because you'll see that um, we start with the fifth one now, which is honor your father and your mother, it actually is not the word honor as we think, but more glory. Give glory to, give a weightiness to your mother and your father. Um, there's a weight of glory on their life, and you are to recognize the weight of that glory on them. They raised you. God's glory is on them to raise you. He provided for them. He's resting upon them. Remember, let his face shine upon you. That means his glory rests upon your parents. So when you dishonor your parents, you're taking away the glory that God gave them. Uh-huh. That's what the text is saying, okay? So let's read number 12 in English. Honor your father and mother. You will then live long on the land that God, your Lord, is giving you. Let's read in Hebrew. Kaved et avicha ve'et imecha lema'an ya'arichun ya'mecha al ha'adama Asher Adonai Elohecha Noten Lach. Okay? So, this is all about being blessed in the land that God gave you. Now, for all the prohibitions, we're going to see low, 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 low. Okay? Now, four of these prohibitions, or low, 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 is seen in verse 13. So, let's read them all four of these together in English. 
Do not commit murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not testify as a false witness against your neighbor. In Hebrew, Lo tirtzah, lo tinaf, lo tignov, lo ta'ane verecha et shaker. Shaker. Okay? So, and it's so funny, shaker is actually talking about lies too. So it's a false witness or a lie. So, um, not to be confused with sheket, Bavakasha. <laughs> Please be quiet. <laughs> All right, let's do, uh, let's see here. We have, which one? We have Lo Tirzach. Okay, so that first one is seen right here. Everyone take a look. Lo Tirzach. The next one starts here. Notice the big space to show the break between um, the commandments. Lo Tinaf, Lo Tignov, Lo Ta'ane, Vercha Ad Shakir. Okay, so now our next one is what? Uh, in English, do, do, do not covet or be envious of your neighbor's house. Do not covet, be envious of your neighbor's wife, his slave, his maid, his ox, his donkey, or anything else that is your neighbor's. Lo takmod beit recha, lo takmod eshet recha, ve'abdo. Va'amato ve'shoro ve'chamoro ve'chol asher le're'echa. So here, this last one, you you have the word takmod um, uh, here, which um, this statement uh, of coveting is related to all the belongings of your neighbor. How well does that work with? loving your neighbors yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very well, right? Yeah. So the first four really work well with the Shema, the first part of it, uh, especially to uh, love God with all your heart, soul, and strength. And then the Ve'ahavta we find in Leviticus 19.18, um, all the other six. And so two tablets, ten words, these are the ten words, okay, that we see in the Torah. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Let's say the closing blessing. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Temet Vechai Olam Nata Betochenu Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and life everlasting, planted in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. All right, let's pray for nourishment to our bodies. <coughs> Abba, we thank you, Lord God, for your goodness this Shavuot. We pray, Lord God, as we feast together, let us be uh, experiencing, let us experience the mountaintop experience of your love, your peace, your joy, your presence. Father, as it was in the days of Sinai, let it be in the days of Zion, in Jerusalem, as it was in the book of Acts chapter 2. Let that Spirit of God rest upon us that rested upon them and filled them, dwelt among them, and Father, overflowed out of them. We thank you for your blessings this Shabbat, this wonderful Shavuot celebration. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you and keep you And make His face to shine upon you And be gracious to you May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you May the Lord grant you His peace Yiverecha Adonai V'yishmerecha Yae Adonai P'navelecha V'hunecha Yisa Adonai May the Lord bless you and keep you And make His face to shine upon you And be gracious to you May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you May the Lord grant you His peace Yiverecha Adonai V'yishmerecha Adonai, benave lecha vihunecha Yisa Adonai, benave lecha veyaseh Lecha shalom